Let me now introduce the leadership team available on this call. We have Amit Chadha, CEO, Abhishek, CEO, and Rajiv Gupta, CFO. We will begin with Amit providing an overview of the company performance and outlook, followed by Rajiv, who will walk you through the financial statements and performance. Let me now hand over the call to Amit. Yeah, hi. Um, Clifford, I'm audible? Yes, sir, you are. Perfect. Thank you, Pinku, and thank you all for joining us in the call today. I hope all of you are keeping healthy and safe. With that, let me start with the key highlights of our Q4 performance. In USD terms, we had a sequential revenue growth of 3.6% in constant currency, with transportation and plant engineering leading the growth. We sustained the EBIT margin at 18.6% with operating margin efficiencies. Our large deals engine continues to fire with a 100 million win, 100 million plus win in this quarter, and our total deal TCV win in Q4 was the highest ever, as well as in the FY. As we wrap up the financial year, let me outline the highlights of our performance vis-a-vis -vis our stated six-dimensional strategy. Growth. As you have seen from the results, we have met our guidance and we are happy to have achieved the 20% growth mark in constant currency dollar terms. More importantly, the growth was broad-based with all segments growth growing in double digits. Second, technology quotient. We had more than thrice the number of own patent filing in FI22 at 98 versus 28 in the previous year. This is a sign of the growing number of innovation and solution building programs that our engineers are working on and the results of our investments into labs and new age technologies. This is also showing up in our digital engineering revenues, which were 57% in Q4 versus 56% in quarter three. Third, customer centricity, our client focus and proactive investments has helped us make progress across our six bets. We are participating in strategic transformational programs with our customers, leading to bigger scale and market share. The 100 million deal with John is a good example of this, and I will talk about this in detail shortly. Fourth, people engagement. We started many new programs during the year to drive greater employee inclusion in the areas of career progression and development and fraternity building. Over the last three quarters, employees across the company went through an extensive exercise to refresh, revisit, and define our vision, mission, and values in line with our long-term aspirations. I urge you to visit our website and take a look at it. Uh, we are very passionate uh, about this particular area. Four, operating model, or five, operating model. We improved EBIT margins by nearly 400 BIPs in FI22 through operating efficiencies and better quality of revenue led by digital. This resulted in an overall 44% increase in PAT to 957 crores for FI22. For ESG, finally, we launched our first sustainability report in March and unveiled our ambition to be carbon and water neutral by 2030. Additionally, we look at sustainability in a very holistic manner and this means we are also working with our customers to build innovative digital solutions that will accelerate their transformation to net zero. Let me now provide a segmental performance and outlook. Starting with transportation, we had a strong quarter with sequential growth of 7.8% with all three subsegments, auto, trucks of highway, and aero, firing well. Our ESEV big bet is playing out well with two large deal wins in Q4. The first one, was a 100 million plus deal with Jaunt, where we will be their strategic partner, engineering partner, to build an all electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. As part of this deal, along with our center in Chennai, we will be setting up an engineering R&D center in Canada to provide end-to-end -end engineering support, which will involve multiple areas like flight control systems, battery management, power electronics, cockpit display, etc. This deal is an example of how we have taken our ESCV strengths in auto and trucks off highway to the aero segment. We believe our aero segment will be powered by the same trends towards alternative energy, electrification, hybridization, which are seeing massive spending today. I'm also happy to note that we won back-to-back -to -back 
a second 100 million deal between FY21 and FY22, as you will recall. We further won a 25 million deal with a new age company focused on autonomous and self-driving cars. Here, LTDS will be the exclusive engineering partner to design the autonomous and connected car platform. We are increasing our traction with traditional OEMs and tier ones as well, as these customers pivot towards autonomous and electrification and, and kick off various programs. We recently got in panel with the US auto major to work on both advanced and conventional areas and expect this to ramp up quickly. Overall, we are extremely pleased with our performance in transportation. It is now a 300 million plus segment on an annualized run rate basis and an FI22 delivered industry leading growth of 23% and nearly 19% EBITDA margins. We see a good pipeline of deals in electrification, connectivity, autonomous, especially on the software side, and we remain bullish on the outlook in transportation. Moving on to plant engineering, we had a good quarter with 3% sequential growth, which was broad-based across FMCG, ONG, and chemicals. A common trend across the three segments is the investments being made with the companies towards capacity expansion and plant modernization as people look to do alternative sourcing, etc. As a result, we are seeing good demand for EPCM services, digital asset management, and automation. As an example, for a US-based food company, we are providing engineering support for their greenfield plant expansion happening across US and Europe. On the sustainability front, we are seeing growing traction in projects related to carbon capture and wastewater treatment. Summing up, we remain positive on the outlook for plant engineering and expect steady growth to continue. At industrial products, while we saw demand across our customer base for supply chain disruptions and commodity price inflation, faced by a few of our top customers had an impact on our overall growth in this segment. We do expect this to be temporary as global companies in the industrial sector are spending more on new product introductions. This along with rising product digitization, digital products backed by digital manufacturing is giving us growth opportunities in the software and platform development side. In addition, our expertise in circumventing supply chain challenges through component re-engineering and SEMCON repurposing, including FPGA, is being leveraged by customers. As an example, in one of the large deals we won with the US customer, we are working closely with their tier one and tier two suppliers to identify and resolve supply chain bottlenecks. We also established a digital twin center of excellence uh, in the part in partnership with Microsoft and Bentley recently that will address and accelerate digital twin and digital thread requirements of new age manufacturing companies. For the year, industrial products had an impressive 21% growth, which is a faster pace versus the past years. The pipeline addition continues to be healthy and we expect growth to be strong in the current fiscal too. Moving on to telecom and high tech, as we evolve with newer technology, we have launched a new business unit for Metaverse and believe that this will help us with both growth and profitability in the medium term. In Q4, in spite of the decision that we made on not renewing a legacy program in the interest of better profitability for the segment, we grew 1% sequentially. We are seeing good demand across all key segments, SEMCON, Telecom, and ITEC. The 5G lab that we set up in Oran, private network design and device engineering for paving the way for deeper conversations with a few large telecom service providers and high-tech customers. We will be shortly launching a 5G lab at a couple of our global R&D centers too. Our play in 5G is to leverage the expertise across the spectrum. For example, in Metaverse, we will be combining our 5G, consumer electronics, product and software engineering to build out solutions in the virtual augmented domain. The empanelment that we had signed in the previous quarter with one of the world's largest opportunities, and we are expecting a good scale up in the coming quarters. We see a gradual improvement in the pace of sequential growth at Telecom iTech as some of the recently signed engagements started ramping up in full effect, and our portfolio shift towards more advanced technology areas like 5G and AI. Lastly, medical. We are seeing a gradual increase in the pipeline led by opportunities in the software and digital platform where customers are investing. In Q4, we won a few remediation projects where we will be helping companies streamline quality management systems across product families and in component re-engineering. 
We are also expanding the software as a medical device, SAMD space, and assisting medtech companies in clearing FDA compliance. Last quarter, I talked about a sepsis detection device that we developed across based on a microfluidics infection management platform. Happy to share that this has won the big innovation award for the most innovation product of the year in the US. Overall, we expect a pickup in the growth pace in medical and definitely expect a better performance in FI23. Let me move on to Outlook. Over the past year, I had opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with multiple customers across Europe and US. The world has opened up, clients have started meeting in their offices. Our customers are looking at us as partners for their strategic product roadmap, and I believe our investments and solutions being developed in the six bets are in alignment with their needs. The large deal traction and pipeline continues to scale up well across the US, Europe, and Japan. Our pipeline is higher than previous years, and we expect this momentum of deal closures to continue. On the supply side, we have ramped up our pressure hiring and the training in new technologies with almost 18,000 people having gone through our Global Engineering Academy training and reskilling in FY22. In FY22, we hired about 3,000 freshers and our GEA faculty, led by um, our head of Global Engineering Academy and our CO, plus the infrastructure that we have developed to hire and train, believe that this will help us to get better scale and pyramid in the current fiscal and beyond. As you look at FI23, the two areas we will keep focusing on to keep a close watch will be how global growth will be impacted in the, in the backdrop of high inflation and supply chain disruption, and secondly, attrition, which we believe will continue to be elevated in the short term. I am fortunate to be leading a very engaged workforce of 20,000 plus people, engineers, technologists, who are excited about the possibilities at LTTS. I'm thankful to my leadership team, the entire extended uh, leadership team and the employees at LTTS for their commitment, their passion, and look forward to reaching many new milestones. Our mantra of profitable, sustainable, and inclusive growth across our six dimension continues to be our guiding path. We reaffirm our earlier guidance of reaching a billion dollars by Q2, Q3 of FI23. I'm also saying for FI23, we are guiding uh, organic dollar revenue growth of 13.5 to 15.5%. With that, I wish you good health. I'm around for questions. I thank you, and I hand over now to Rajiv. Thank you, Amit. Uh, good evening to all, and hope you all are doing well. Uh, glad to share our FI22 performance. It has been a year of consistent performance through the quarters and strong results across parameters. Broad-based revenue growth, good improvement on EBIT and PAT margin, and healthy cash flows and a high return on equity. With that, let me walk you through the details of our Q4 FI22 and full year financials, starting with the PNL. Our revenue for the quarter was 1,756 crores, a growth of 4.1% on sequential basis. Our double-digit year-on-year growth trajectory continues with Q4 revenues up 22% on year-on-year basis. We deliver debit margin at 18.6%, flat compared to Q3. During the quarter, we had headwinds from utilization and revenue mix changes, which were offset by operational efficiency gains, economies of scale, and currency depreciation. Moving to below a bit, other income at 31 crores, slightly higher on sequential basis due to higher forex gains. Effective tax rate for Q4 was 26.7%, and for FI22, it was 26.6%, which is in line with our expectations between 26.5 to 27%. Net income for the quarter stood at 262 crores, which is 14.9% of revenue, up 5.3% on a sequential basis, driven primarily by higher revenues. For the year FI22, revenue was at 6,570 crores, a growth of 21% over FI21, a bit margin at an all-time high of 18.3%, an improvement of 380 bits over FI21. 
नेट इनकम फॉर एफ आई ट्वेंटी टू एट नाइन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी सेवन क्रोर्स अप बाई फोर्टी फोर परसेंट प्राइमरीली फ्रॉम हायर रेवन्यूज एंड ऑपरेटिंग मार्जिन नाउ मूविंग टू द बैलेंस शीट लेट मी हाईलाइट द की लाइन आइटम्स डी एस ओ वॉज एट एटी सेवन डेज एंड ऑफ क्वार्टर फोर कंपेयर टू एटी फोर एंड ऑफ क्वार्टर थ्री वाइल अनबिल्ड डिक्रीज टू फिफ्टीन डेज इन क्यू फोर विच इज अ सिक्स डे इम्प्रूवमेंट ओवर क्यू थ्री The combined DSO, including in unbuilt, stood at only two days, <clears throat> slightly above our target range of less than 95 days, and we continue to work upon improving this. Let me talk about cash flows. In FI 22, free cash flows was 851 crores, a healthy 89% of net income. Our cash and in investments rose to 2,152 crores by end of Q4 FI 22. on capital return the board today recommended a final dividend of rupees 15 per share taking the total dividend of fi 22 to 35 rupees per share this translates to a dividend payout ratio of 39% for fi 22 our return on equity stands at 25% for fi 22 versus 21% last year higher on account of increase in net profit to 957 crores in fi 22 Versus 663 crores in FI21. Moving to revenue metrics, on a sequential basis, dollar revenue growth was 3.1 percent in reported terms and 3.6 percent on constant currency basis. Uh, primarily led by transportation and plant engineering segments, the segmental margin performance was better in three out of five segments on a sequential basis. In respect of operational metrics. Utilization was at 71.1 percent, sorry, 75.1 percent in Q4, on account of full quarter impact of the strong hiring done in Q3. Going forward, we expect this to gradually move up to 78 percent levels. On-site offshore mix has shifted towards on-site due to the initial ramp up of new deal wins and sale of solutions. Offshore percentage now stands at 54.6 percent. However, we expect this to be in the line of 57% range going forward. TNM revenue mix increased to 71.4% in Q3 and is likely to maintain at these levels. Client profile, which indicates number of million dollar plus accounts, has shown a sequential improvement in the 5 million and 1 million plus categories. The client profile numbers have seen an improvement over the past few quarters. This trend will continue in the coming quarters. Client contribution to revenue, all three categories, top five, top ten, and top twenty, continues to be broadly in the same range as Q3. Headcount increased sequentially by 743 employees, while attrition moved up to 20.4 percent. We believe the attrition trend will likely stay higher in the short term, while we continue on various employment engagement measures to contain attrition. A realized rupee. For Q4 was around 75.7 to the US dollar, a depreciation of 1% versus Q3. Before I conclude, let me give some visibility on the EBIT margin trajectory going forward. A key part of our six-dimensional strategy is to build a sustainable operating model. We have seen good results in FI22, and our aspiration is to maintain EBIT margin at 18% plus levels. The headwinds in the coming fiscal will be intermittent wage hikes in a high attrition environment, likely increase in travel and administrative expenses. As part of our strategy, we will continue to make organic and inorganic investments to enhance capabilities and also to enable growth. We will look to offset these headwinds with growth, better quality of revenues, and operational efficiency gains. With that, I conclude. Moderator, now we can take the questions, please. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star then one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Also, as a reminder, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference call. Please limit your questions to two per participant. For any further questions, you may come back for a follow-up. The first question is from Mukul Garg from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. 
<clears throat> Amit, uh, I think good show on uh, winning another $100 million uh, deal this quarter. Uh, I just wanted to <clears throat> dig a bit deeper into your FY23 guidance of 13.5% to 15.5%. Uh, if you look at uh, the kind of deal flow you guys have been doing, um, as well as you know the growth which you have been delivering, it, it seems a little bit subpar. And uh, you know, if you also look at your uh, you know long-term guidance um, around 19-20% range, this uh, you know looks like quite below that. So if you can just uh, help with the pulls and pushes of the uh, you know the revenue growth over FY23, the impact of macro, and uh, you know does this imply that uh, your long-term growth will be more back-ended? So, Mukul, uh, thank you so much for that. So, I take you back about 12 months when we had started with the guidance of 13 to 15 last year as well. Uh, Mukul, uh, there is a mantra that we are using outside of profitable, sustainable, inclusive growth. And it's very simple. Commit what you can deliver and deliver what you just committed. Probably do more, right? So, we are confident of 13 and a half to 15 and a half at this stage. Uh, in spite of what we are seeing coming out on a macro scale, as well as you know what you've been hearing about uh, inflation, recession, blah blah, etc. So we we're comfortable with that range right now. As things change, we let you know. Number one. Number two is that uh, we do see deal velocity uh, has picked up for us uh, through the year. And uh, like I mentioned, our pipeline is at an all-time high. Deal closures are there as well. But as you are aware, Mukul, there are variables that are there. So we do expect broad-based growth across from here on, like I've said. Uh, but we'll continue to stay engaged, uh, continue to try and do the best we can, and uh, and take things forward. Right. So, I mean, I'm uh, sorry to push back a bit on this. Uh, I do understand and appreciate the conservatism which you are, you know, putting in numbers. But uh, it would be great help if you can just kind of give some color from, uh, you know, different verticals perspective. Because over the last two quarters, you have won $200 million plus deals. And, uh, you know, your vertical commentary continue to remain very, very good. But if you look at the lower end of the guidance, it uh, does imply a very very tepid kind of a performance throughout FY23. So while you know it's it's fine to be conservative, but uh, you know is this something which you uh, feel that is a realistic number right now? So Google, um, if I look at um, and it's okay to push back. There's no problem, right? We're having a conversation here. So Google, uh, if I look at transportation, right? Um, I do see the EACV segment as being a tailwind. I see the differentiators we have created, the labs you've created, the traction we've got, the excellent client relationships you've got across US and Europe, plus the empanelments you've done, etc. Continue to be bullish on this segment in terms of growth as we move forward. And that's in each sub segment, right? So it's auto, trucks, off, highway, aero. Uh, in the area of plant engineering, again, I know the uh, uh, the market has changed in terms of people wanting uh, smaller plants, local plants, um, right? Alternative from just in time, they have gone to just in case. So I do expect plant engineering also to continue to deliver uh, healthy growth on an ongoing basis. Don't see a problem in spite of the war, etc. Right? Now, uh, in the high tech segment, Semcon uh, will grow. But again, you know, you are aware this is the most competitive segment, Red Ocean, if I may, for the engineering world. We are establishing Metaverse as a vertical to get out of this Red Ocean part and get to a Blue Ocean part. It will take some time. So, so therefore, we are a little watchful there. Though I have said that there are deals, there are closures, etc., it will take a little bit there. In terms of industrial products, uh, last two quarters or last quarter, uh, we've been tipped. And the broad reason is not that we don't have uh, uh, deals and we don't have people or we don't have, uh, uh, you know, uh, client relationships. It's a function of our discrete manufacturing clients facing various headwinds in their businesses because of supply chain. Now, I do believe short term, they will overcome it. 
but will they come back to a great extent etc to be seen right finally medical uh, we've again made investments in fact i would rate my own solutions in medical to be at par with eacv which has grown the fastest but there are you know certain challenges because medical segment by nature is a little more conservative so i am bullish about my own prospects if i may and our own capabilities our technologists our engineers but at the same time i am mindful of the fact that we have a full year to go by i assure you mukul that as we go through the year and when i come back and talk to you again in quarter to at the end of quarter 1 um i will provide whatever updates i can as i have done in fy22 rest assured um we are baking a lot of this plus and minus to provide you what we provided you of course like i always say internal aspirations and targets are higher thank you the next question is from vibhor singhal from philip capital please go ahead uh, yeah hi uh, good evening sir thanks for taking my question and congrats on great execution uh, once again uh all is just uh, one question i wanted to basically get your uh, uh, idea on uh, the how we are looking at the business in terms of the uh, commodity price hike and the growing inflation i mean I, if i see most of our business is basically pertaining to the manufacturing industry you mentioned in your comments about industrial products that that segment is facing those headwinds i think at some point of time the transportation vertical and uh, other the plant engineering verticals too will probably start feeling the heat as well so in terms of your conversation with the client has anything started on that front that uh, the, the clients are kind of expecting some kind of headwind because uh, the primary concern with the industry today is not what the clients are looking at today but that inflation today could lead to a lower cash flow tomorrow which could lead to a lower it spend day after tomorrow so anything on that front that you are getting uh, from the client in terms of the conversation uh, uh, it would be really helpful and then our second question on the margin front so sure, so sure. so so if i may share with you see when i uh, i'm you know recently in europe what three countries five days 18 meetings uh, similar stuff happening in in uh, uh, in the us in fact our cso our cbos there continue to travel uh, in fact there are meetings happening every day now the people are meeting right and what we hearing is right number one what we hearing is people talk about the invasion of ukraine but uh, they are yet figuring out the impact in fact one client told me that i actually have boarded up my factory in uh, western ukraine and i continue to work people go in in the morning come back in the night and uh, they have put blackout windows and they continue to work inside the factory i was surprised <laughs> right but but they do that right another customer told me that uh, uh, he has actually uh, sent out uh, food cots medicine uh to his employees in china where they are uh, in the office for the last 5 days and will be there for another 2 weeks and uh, uh, for their families they have been providing food vegetables etc etc uh, uh, because he has to do it for his employees so you think about the extent to what people are doing to continue to stay normal this is the new normal unfortunately right so what we hearing is one is invasion of ukraine but people are not sure when go second we hearing people talk about inflation and believe me some of these guys and i was with a ceo for two weeks ago of a 15 billion revenue company they were sharing with me he said i have already taken cost actions to help me with uh, uh, with some of the commodity pricing increase i'm seeing right and then he was talking so about the three things that are coming out with all of this right one continue clients continue to turn towards digital to synthesize as well as for the reliability of operations and that client, and people are engaging us in that second people continue to look for alternative sourcing alternative material alternative components to make sure that they able to continue to deliver third we are seeing that there is a workforce gap that is there between demand and supply at this stage so they continue to look at companies like ourselves to provide them with that extra talent and burst of projects to be able to take things forward so if i look at and i i said this while i was talking to mukul eacv 
uh, is a tailwind right now. I do see this carrying on for the next three years for sure, right? Uh, digital products, mm -hmm. digital manufacturing, both of these have not played out yet. I do believe that will continue on. Medtech is starting off, and you can see, you know, peer results, others. Medtech will grow, right? But it will take some time to pick up speed. Sustainability, uh, people are talking about alternative material, alternative sourcing, um, uh, zero liquid discharge, uh, carbon neutrality, uh, energy storage, etc. But again, this will take a little bit more time to come up. So I do believe that some of these are right now peaking or, or, or at high and will continue for the next two years. There are others that will pick up. So from a demand standpoint, I do feel fairly uh, optimistic. I have not heard of any uh, reversals or anything, and knock on wood, as I say it, uh, uh, at this stage. Got it, got it. Uh, that's really helpful. Uh, just my last question is uh, on the uh, basically the salary hike and the margin strand. So if you could just uh, basically uh, share a plan as to when uh, do we intend to give salary hike in this uh, financial year, uh, what is expected to be the quantum, and uh, is the on-site salary hike, as again we have seen across the board, uh, is it, uh, do you expect it to be higher uh, than uh, earlier years because of the higher inflation in the uh, in US and the Western countries? So I'll let me take a part of the question and then I'll hand it over to our CFO Rajiv to answer the other part. One, uh, I want to tell you that we did do uh, some corrections uh, and uh, positive corrections, right? Because uh, somebody told me when you say corrections, they may think of negative. Negative doesn't work in our industry, it's only positive. So we did positive corrections in, in January uh, for critical talent in the company uh, because that was required. And uh, the margins that you see are after that correction, number one. Number two, our regular hike cycle, increment cycle is July. We are right now in the middle of uh, working out all those details and taking that forward. Uh, but we will make sure uh, we are looking at ring fencing talent. We are looking at various options and various ways to do it. Uh, and we will continue to do that because finally we have to be, you know, look at a sustainable ongoing growth enterprise rather than uh, worry about really just the short, short term. With that said, Rajiv, you want to add this, please? So, I think you also talked about the margin part. Um, and I think as most of you all would have seen, we continue to, um, or rather we have improved on the bit margins over the last five quarters. And in quarter four, we've held at the same levels as quarter three. Now, uh, like I said in my opening commentary, I mean, we will have headwinds and tailwinds to manage. The tailwinds will continue to be growth and quality of revenues. Um, second, uh, if you look at some of the operational mat metrics, uh, we did hire close to about 3,000 freshers during the year. Uh, you've seen that utilization has come down in Q4. We believe um, many of these freshers will become billable as we enter into FI23. Uh, operational efficiencies, I think we talked about sustainable operating model. Um, a large part of FI22 really has been about building fresher talent and improving on the pyramid. Our CNB cost as a percentage of revenue has indeed come down. So we feel that's going to be another lever that should play in our favor. So these are some of the tailwinds. While I talk about the tailwinds, of course, um, I should also talk about the headwinds. Um, so we believe that uh, you will see savings that uh, we we had in FI21 and 22 with COVID almost settling down now. Travel will start. It's almost begin to show up as uh, Amit talked about. Most of our sales folks are traveling, meeting clients. Uh, so we expect that it will almost normalize in FI23. Um, attrition and wage hikes, intermittent wage hikes, that will be another headwind that we will have to manage. And last but not the least, uh, we will continue to invest both in organic and inorganic. But all in all, um, our aspiration will be to maintain at 18% plus margin level going forward in FI23 as well. Thank you. The next question is from Nitin Padmanabhan from Investec. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, uh, first is um, on the large deals. Um, um, is it possible to give uh, the rough tenure for these deals, and uh, um, uh, you know, uh, so that's one. And second is 
the number of large deals seem to be accelerating right and uh, you also mentioned that the pipeline also looks very strong uh, so just wanted your uh, sense uh, if you just compare uh, maybe the last uh, many many years i think this is the f- uh, last year and this year the last two years we've actually seen a lot more large deals uh, and your uh, your commentary suggests that it's picking up uh, so f- from a growth perspective fundamentally if we think longer term uh, does this add a lot more predictability for you when you think about it just wanted your thoughts on uh, both these quickly sure so number one on the large deal uh, this is a 100 plus million dollar deal as we've explained in our uh, in fact the press release has details on it right um, 120 plus million dollars uh, that's there and generally these air uh, you know aircraft design cycles are across six to eight years right and that's the period that this deal will run through starting up sometime uh, in in uh, q2 uh, as we start right so that is number one now in terms of traction look there are a couple three things that we have fundamentally tried to change here number one is that as we look at solutioning we actually step back always and see what are the white spaces that we should be investing in right and spending time on i mean for example if i look at the ev space esev space we worked on developing in house ev components we also worked on creating our own integrated e axle solution if i look at medical technologies we worked on creating a cuffless non invasive bp algorithm we created our own chest rai if i was to take the example of and i can go on and on but broadly what i'm trying to explain is that we look at the white spaces we look at the technology we do a build up what that does is that rather than being known as a commodity supplier we end up trying to gain mind share before we gain market share right and once you gained mind share then market share becomes a by product of that in addition to that while we do that with our cto team and our practice teams uh, that we are doing our cso cbos have actually got a large deals engine full time focused which has got finance participation delivery participation etc it's a cross functional team working 187 uh, globally to continue to seed new ideas create new ones answer etc etc so knock on wood i do have confidence that the momentum is there and like i said again blessed to have a team that continues to think every day uh, on newer ideas newer things on how we can add value to customers how do you unlock because once we unlock value for customers what we get is a by product of that so with that said i do believe that the momentum will continue one thing i i will tell you that we learned last time uh, and i was sharing with some of you that we now realize that a 9.5 million deal should not be done it should be a 10 million deal right a 20 million deal should not be done we should aspire for 25 so that whole feeling in the company is to do bigger better more and we'll continue to strive towards that um so just as a follow up so um, uh, are you suggesting that this is something that's more ltts driven focused in terms of the large deal engine or is it that the market itself is more uh, has more large deals uh, by nature or is it both look my first answer is it's only us and nobody can do it but here is where we are i do believe that deals are being done by across the board the engineering segment itself is seeing more mature traction i however do believe the differentiator ltts brings is the cross poly innovation that we talk about and the proactive nature of trying to bake proactive ideas so that i believe is a differentiator but uh, i do think the engineering industry overall stand to benefit thank you the next question is from salil desai from marcelis investment managers please go ahead uh so on the bso days uh, when you look back at the year and uh, uh, you know the target was is what uh, the actual numbers are what are the specific areas where you know the miss happened 
and how would that change in the next one year for you to go back to the target? So can you please repeat, were you talking about deals or DSO? DSO days, sir. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Salil, let me take this one. Uh, um, so clearly, if you look at DSO, our focus is that we should be in the 95-day range, uh, both for build and unbuild. Um, you, as I mentioned in my opening commentary, we have come down in terms of unbuild DSO to 15 days compared to where it was 21 days in previous quarter. So that's an additional six days, right? What eventually it does it, it adds to the DSO build. Having said that, yes, at about 100 Two, we continue to work upon it, um, but despite the fact that DSO is where it is, our free cash flows are at 89 to 90% of PAT, right? So it has clearly been an area of focus. We want to ensure that the free cash flows continue to improve. It also helps us to build a war chest for uh, inorganic growth uh, in future. Uh, but having said that, Salil, our focus continues to be to improve DSO, and you will see that over the coming quarters, we will bring more stability in the DSO. Yeah. Uh, so the, the miss last year was, I mean, was it something specific, some events, some that particular client, which gives you confidence that things will not recur next year for you to kind of achieve the target? Or no, there is, is it yeah. on the collection? Why don't you complete a question, Salim? I'm saying, was there any specific areas where you think things will improve uh, this year for you to achieve the target? Or was there something one-off uh, so, You know, we did talk about in our commentary back in quarter one um, and also followed through in quarter two. We've been through systems implementation during this year. Clearly, the idea is to bring more efficiency in the whole chain in the order to cash cycle. We believe that should be an area which would help us to improve DSO in the coming quarters. There is nothing in specific that I will communicate uh, either as a cause of concern or as a miss. Thank you. The next question is from Kavaljit Saluja from Kotak. Please go ahead. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, uh, my question is on uh, profitability, or rather, you know, trying to understand uh, uh, the employee cost, uh, uh, Rajiv. Now, when I look at your uh, blended employee cost, uh, uh, you know, that is down 13%, uh, uh, you know, compared to where it was six months back. And this is happening at a time wherein your on site uh, mix in revenues has gone up from 40.3 to maybe 45 odd uh, percent. I'm just trying to uh, reconcile, uh, uh, you know, how uh, uh, this has been achieved. Now, I understand that you have recruited uh, freshers, but still the disconnect in numbers is quite uh, 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 sharp. Uh, so, can you just uh, help me with the same? Um, hi, Kavaljeet. So uh, I think two points, and I will also have uh, our uh, Chief Operating Officer Abhishek add to it. Um, so we did talk about the fact that we have hired close to 3,000 freshers during the year. And I would have to step back, Kavaljeet, to really unfold the story. Uh, in FI21, it being a COVID year, we did not hire employees. And that clearly led to the pyramid bloating. FI22 gave the opportunity to course correct on the pyramid. It also gave us the opportunity with the growth to build for future capability. We hired close to 3,000 freshers, which is what led to the reduction in the CNB as a percentage of revenue. Um, your point around the growth in on-site, of course, and also trying to add back to the reduction in CNB, um, the fact being that the growth in on-site is more of a Q4 phenomena. Um, and that's more because some of the deals have started in Q4. You will see the follow through and growth in offshore happening over the subsequent quarters. I will also have Abhi share in terms of uh, the operational aspects around the CNP. Yeah, I think Rajiv, we have covered it all. I mean, we clearly saw a uh, few quarters back, actually, more than a year, year back, I would say that the way the industry is moving, including the attrition part, if we do not invest in the freshers, uh, we will not be able to uh, uh, have the right kind of operational excellence. And also the engine we have built on training these freshers because it's not, we're not just hiring them and then um, uh, hoping that they'll start delivering. We start engaging with the freshers at least six months before they join us while they're in their colleges. So when they come into the company, uh, the, the quality of freshers, the, the quality of training is uh, to the liking of our businesses and customers, if I may. 
and i think that strategy has really paid off for us and the fact that we started this more than a year back is what uh, is showing the results now okay thank you uh, if, if i may ask a follow on question and that uh, is for uh, amit uh, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to uh, understand the guidance philosophy uh, because uh, uh, you know you have given out a guidance of 13 and a half to 15 and a half, and at the same time uh, you have said that you know implied in many different ways uh, that the guidance is conservative. Now, I'm just trying to uh, you know understand that uh, you know at a philosophical level, do you think uh, the guidance should be always uh, you know based on the way you see the demand? Or do you think that you know we should try and guess uh, every year what's the kind of cushion that you have built into your uh, margin, or rather, you know, revenue growth assumption, and you know how does that change every year? Sure. So, Kavijit, uh, when we do the uh, when we set up guidance and then we uh, go through, we always look at all the positives, the negatives uh, that are there, the certainties, the deals won. The execution cycle, the supply side. Uh, we look at macroeconomics, etc. It's a fairly intense exercise uh, that we do. It's an algorithm that we we, we leverage internally uh, to do that. Um, so with that said, um, like I was explaining earlier, also that see, in some of the segments, I'm fairly comfortable, confident. I can see it. I can see. I I mean I have plans right up to the end of the year, believe me, and some of those. There are certain areas which I think are spotty at this stage from a, a, a variability standpoint, right? Not my our capability, but variability standpoint, uh, things could change, etc. Uh, so that's where the guidance is coming from. Uh, but believe me, Kaujit, we'll continue to work on this on a continuous, ongoing basis and, uh, uh, and continue to provide an update to you. I, in fact, didn't say it, but I'm truly thankful uh, to everybody on the call that has worked with us through this last year. Uh, it's not been easy. So thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Abhishek Shindadkar from Ingrid Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats uh, on good execution. Uh, so one question and partly answered by, uh, you know, uh, Abhishek uh, in the previous answer, but it seems like, uh, you know, our guidance, uh, you know, it seems like there is no challenge on the demand, but it's more on supply. And uh, you alluded to the fact that, you know, you start pe training people uh, six months ahead uh, or are, when they are part of college, but uh, just trying to understand that, uh, 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 you know, are they kind of billable uh, immediately when they join or, you know, there is still a second level of training once they join? And, uh, you know, e is there another way to kind of, uh, 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 you know, uh, get them billable early or, uh, you know, if, if you can explain them, explain this process, that could be really helpful. Uh Yes, uh, thanks for the question. See, the way it works is, yes, while we start engaging with them while they're in college, because uh, we also engage with the faculty, by the way, of the colleges, so that they also train them uh, in the areas what industry needs. Uh, when they join us, uh, we uh, uh, have them go through a more uh, structured uh, training process in our academy. Uh, do understand that while they're in college, is still online virtual training, but we insist on uh, these... Uh, students uh, working from our Mysore, Baroda campuses uh, and uh, do more in-person training because we are engineers, right? I mean, the work we do is hardcore. I mean, they have to apply what they learn. We have all these uh, investments, labs we have created. We make them go through the labs that we have. Uh, our practice heads, practice managers engage with them and show them the kind of projects we do. So it's a lot of hands-on training that we do while uh, in the uh, first many months uh, that they are with us. There is no specific timeline or something where we say they join and then in next month they will get billable, but it varies from technology to technology, customer to customer, and uh, that's the way it works. But yes, there is a lot of investment after they join in them uh, before uh, uh, they can uh, uh, get into billable those. And, and more than billable, if I may add, uh, and I think we our philosophy is, so if you're doing engineering and technology work, uh, it's not uh, a lot of commoditized work. So, you know, you are working on 
products you're working on designing a plant you're working on uh, you know a digital twin concept etc so unless we are satisfied that the work product will be uh, will be uh, beyond defect right will be super scale we don't want to deploy the people out so at times we will ask them to do a little bit more retraining in a certain area so uh, uh, we we want to make sure that our customers love us for the work that we do because growth will happen profits will happen if clients love the work that we do if we get into delivery issues and all that with our mess for us just one last point we also put many of them through internal projects practice projects that we run which creates a technology assets on one hand also in the process they get trained so uh, that that's the way it works um no this is really helpful and the second question is more uh, about uh, uh, uh you know captive so with the challenges especially in the eastern european part uh, you know based on your conversation uh, uh, you know with customers from europe uh, is there any uh, uh, you know heightened uh, conversation about setting up you know incrementally or making india as a probably you know alternate destination right now which may not be in their uh, you know current setup okay so so look um, and this data that's available across russia uh, ukraine and belarus there's about 275000 engineering jobs that have gone offline uh, if i may right and that therefore has people moving some of those to latam some of those to india some of those to other parts of europe right uh, we continue to work with our key clients to support them through this difficult time uh, we are also so there are certain areas we have started to work with them uh, we are also established a center in poland last quarter uh, so we are providing we are open to we are working with engaging with people that are moving from these countries into krakow where we can offer them employment as well so we are working on various parameters in this area i don't want to comment on one specific area or another i also want to behave like a good corporate citizen where i don't want to try and you know uh, do this in the wrong way but we are working with our clients strategic clients to help them uh, some of them have their own centers there which are no longer operational so we are supporting them on some of the programs uh, so we continue to engage I don't want to put a number to it yet, uh, but yes, there is stuff that's happening in the area. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We take the last question from the line of Sandeep Agarwal from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Good evening. Thanks for taking my question and congrats and good execution. so uh, i had just one question on the uh, supply side while you know you have given lot of detail on that front uh, but the key uh, aspect which i wanted to understand how much is the difference between uh, you know uh, recruiting pressure to uh, get them on billing in our ernd industry versus the services industry is that gap a couple of weeks or it is almost similar uh, or it is higher so no, um, so so look at it this way uh, answer will uh, will potentially vary right uh, in terms of the areas we are putting them on see some of the best analytical brains we are getting actually are people that are masters that are coming out in specific areas in some places some phd's now they will immediately get get deputed to projects with a very short term term there are others who are doing build plans with them getting them up to speed etc so there is no one answer what i can definitely tell you because i have played both sides of this i've been in the it industry and now in the engineering industry for more than uh, more than a decade uh, it takes a little bit more but it varies depending on vertical skill set technology area um, uh, that we have got okay but we can't that uh, but you can't but we do want engineers we do need people with masters so so the technology the engineering pedigree etc is very important uh, can't do it with just bachelors etc that's a fact yeah so if i can ask one more question uh, uh, so uh, so uh, we are hearing that you know some of this companies which have got uh, impacted because of the geopolitical situation have become very aggressive in recruiting from some of the key supply cities in india uh, has it impacted us or you are also seeing the same trend or 
to you don't think it is uh, something to be called out yet so so look we've got centers in six cities uh, our primary focus to grow will be chennai mysore and baroda our secondary focus on mumbai hyderabad bangalore and then pune if, as needed right yeah. so we have centers in these places so we are fairly diverse from that stand point um, yes there is a talent uh, uh, war out there and uh, we do believe it will take some time to shake out but we the only answer here is to go through with it uh, and uh, you know two things one if we can offer a differentiated technology uh, career path road map uh, projects to our employees and our associates or people joining us they'll be excited right uh, so kind of projects etc we have them do uh the second thing is that uh, can we be inclusive can we offer them opportunities outside of what they are doing right now uh that's why i mentioned go up to our website look at the values mission vision values uh, that we are doing now so we are working on various parameters to see how we can get the excitement up thank you yeah ladies and gentlemen that was the last question i now hand the conference over to mr pinku papan for closing comments Thank you everyone for joining us on this call today. We hope we were able to answer most of your questions. Uh, please reach out to me in case you have follow up questions. Uh well here's wishing you a great and safe time and hope to meet you soon in person. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much sir. Ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Talent Technology Services Limited that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.